Here you go. Go home. Good boy. <laughs> For those of you who are new here, my name is Lauren. I'm living aboard my 1993 Benito with my kitten, Mako. I've fallen my heart from Missouri to the Bahamas with the dream of living a sustainable and fully immersed life on the ocean. I hope you enjoy following along and joining this trying but amazing life. Thank you so much for subscribing and following along. Your support, especially Patreons, means the world to me and makes this dream possible. Two done. And one, two, three, four, five, and six to go. This sucks. Mako. On number four, and that whole thing came out, if that tells you the status of this. And it just keeps getting worse. That literally just snapped in half. I just got the last hose off. I ended up having to cut some of the hoses and not just get the clamps off because clamps were super hard. I'm about to go meet with the people who are doing my exhaust because it's the first week of March is over and no progress has been made and now I'm at the point where he said, he said this, he said this and no one's moving forward. I'm gonna go meet with them and I'm really hoping for the best and wish me luck. Flange here, attach to the wall and bounce strap. So great news. The conversation started with maybe still being six to eight weeks. And finally, after they went through everything, I said, can this be done any quicker? Basically with COVID, everything is just super back ordered. Fiberglass is really hard to get. And so they're gonna do my muffler in a different material. It's gonna be a little heavier, but it can be done within four weeks. slight issue that was here they didn't give me enough of the half inch they and they gave me two five eighths so I need one more half inch fitting and they also I don't have anything to plug this side but this side they gave me just a rounded end so I'm gonna go get one more of that and one more of these tomorrow and it will be done. The thing to get to my boat is not working. I plugged it in all night and it's still dead. So we're gonna try to jump it, see what's wrong. Because I need to get to my boat to get clothes and um, get my water hooked back up. And you can tell by the wind, it's super windy and I'd like to check on it because the wind's gonna be 30 to 40 tonight. <laughs> this is my template muffler to uh, see if the real one is going to fit. 
thingy I've been using needs a new battery. So I'm walking to the water taxi dock and one of the families or a couple anchored next to me has been looking out for my boat and said they would pick me up from the dock anytime. So super grateful. The help continues. Tomorrow is Monday the 14th and they're gonna start production on my muffler tomorrow because I'll have, I'll tell them that it fits today and I'll start tomorrow. And production time is estimated to be three to four weeks. Um, so I'm planning on four weeks plus two or three days for installation. Hopefully that gets me leaving here around the 10th. I obviously wanna go with the weather window because I don't have any charters lined up right now. And I'm not booking till May 1st. It would be great to take a nice weather window and have a beautiful sail back to the Bahamas. That's the goal. But we all know things don't go as planned, so we'll see. So I just got on my boat. Um, I'm doing some reflecting. I've been editing a lot lately. I've been not spending as much time on my boat as I should be, given the state you guys have been seeing it in. But I realized um, just now I've, my boat is a project right now. That's really affected, I think, how I unconsciously felt about my boat. It's become to feel more like a workspace than my home. And it's honestly just made me really motivated to get her back. Um, I really want her cleaned up. I miss my, I miss having it being my home. Let's get to work. Motivation's back. Okay, the real challenge with this begins. Sometimes when you fix boats, you need really small people and really small hands. And sometimes when you fix boats, you need a lot of muscle. And right now I need both. So I guess I'm the middle man, um, but I need more strength and I need smaller hands. I'm ready to dive into the unknown. Cause I'm on my way and I'm ready now. I'm ready now. It's time to let go. I'm ready now to take a chance. I'm back on my boat. And let's finish this water today. Okay. I think they're not on they're not all on perfectly, but they all have hose clamps on them. Now, the real question is, when I turn my water pump on, I hear trickling somewhere. Mako, what is your input on still not having water? You seem very intrigued. Maybe? It's finally time to finish the water maker today. Fingers crossed we can accomplish the whole thing today. Well, damn, drink the water, woman. <laughs> How are you doing? I don't think- Water maker is installed and working. I um, fix my fresh water pump and then I try to fix, there are two hoses that were leaking and I went to go fix the first one and really ugly cut, but I pushed through it, I cut them, I have two hose clamps on again, now we're going to test it. No judgment, please. Um, there's still a few little drips of water. Just got a zip tie, about to clip off the zip ties and finish securing it, but it's all good. Okay, this morning I'm going to show you my final water maker install that 
Mike and I did. It was a lot of work trying to figure out where exactly each piece could go without it being too far apart and close enough to the batteries and how to connect it to my water tanks. I'm gonna walk you through it, how I would turn it on and every step and why we did that. So a little overview, walk down the companion way. All three hatches right here are have water maker stuff in them. And then it's wired, my batteries are here and then my water pump is there. We're gonna start at the water pump. I have four water tanks and each I get to do a little valve to choose which tank I want on. So we did a valve here. This is the first thing I have to do is opening this valve before I start the water maker. So then it flows from the water maker here and then into whichever tank I choose. So we did a little reverse system there. So that's the first thing I have to do so it doesn't build pressure. The second thing I do is really close. So I come down here and I have two breakers now. This is my low pressure pump and this is my high pressure pump. So I turn the low pressure pump on and then I will come show you. Here is my low pressure pump. This is the filter for the water maker and it will go through here to my low pressure pump and then this from the low pressure pump it comes through this where this blue hose is and into this compartment. And there is my gauge and through here the carbon filter there's my fresh water rinse that goes back out so right there you see it goes in to there and then out so from there then it goes to my high pressure and this is that my once I turn my low pressure pump on I wait a few seconds and I turn my high pressure pump on which is just a little breaker right there so I turn that breaker on and that activates my high pressure and then as that kicks in, I adjust this. So there's my high pressure pump. And then the water flows there and into my tank. All the way, there's, there's no one. Right, hose is my water and monitoring system. And then for the excess, this is that hose and we have it going to my shower pump. After the shower pumps, we have it connected to that hose because it was the closest hose that goes out to my boat. So that was my water maker. It turned out really well. I think if we knew exactly where everything was gonna go before we started, it would have taken a lot less time. But it was a challenge. I mean, it looks pretty straightforward now, but a lot of wiring and figuring out where things go, how they're gonna work. And we were doing my exhaust at the same time, so it was trying not to get in their way and all that. So that is my water maker. From that cutie night, thank you for supporting and thank you Seawater Pro. Again, the water maker is amazing. I can't wait to use it over in the Bahamas and Thank you to everyone who is following my journey and supporting online and also to everyone in Florida and locally and everyone who has either helped physically, virtually, supported, given encouraging words, um, taught me things. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. My last few months would have been impossible without the community I have around me. So thank you everyone for your support, virtually, physically, and all of the above. Mako and I cannot wait to get to the Bahamas soon.